Welcome to this guided annotation of Futility by Wilfred Owen. In order to make the most of this video, ensure you have a copy of the poem in front of you and multiple highlighters and pens. Before you move on, please ensure that you understand each of the terms in this glossary, including the list of techniques that we will be discussing. Futility opens by immediately addressing the reader and introducing them to a dead or dying soldier. As this soldier is unnamed, the reader cannot be sure whether Owen is talking about a specific friend or about any of the unnamed soldiers that died during World War I. Owen then goes on to talk about the sun and how the sun has previously woken up this soldier. The, whis the sun whispering of fields half sown represents the lost potential of a young man who has died too soon. When Owen states that the sun has always woken him, even in France, it's clear that we are on the Western Front. However, this morning is different. The We've been presented with snow instead of sunshine. Please understand that snow is not the cause of death, but is merely presented as an opposing weather pattern to sunshine. In the final two lines, we have to question whether these soldiers really believe the kind old son will be able to revive their friend or whether we're in the process of watching the soldiers lay out the body. Move is an imperative verb. It's directed at the reader and it gives an order. It immediately places the reader within the action of the poem, so we feel like we're part of it. The sun is definitely personified throughout this. The sun cannot really whisper, people can whisper. These adverbs describing the sun's actions create, an, create a mood of continuity that has been broken at until, in the same way that the soldier's life has been cut short too soon. The repetition of woke reinforces the connection between sleep and death in the poem. As I said earlier, snow is not the cause of death. It is a metaphor for death, for the end of the life bringing sunshine. Rouse, of course, means to wake somebody up, but here it may also be an allusion to the second wake up call in the armed forces during World One, War I, after the reveille came the rousing call. The kind old son, still personified. These positive terms create a hopeful tone in the first stanza. Hopeful, perhaps, that this soldier is not really dead, or perhaps that there is some point to this war and to this death, that it is not yet futile. The rhyme scheme may be marked as A, B, A, B, C, C, C. However, you're going to immediately notice that these words don't quite rhyme. Sun and sown, once and France, snow and now. These are para rhymes or half rhymes and they disrupt the flow of the poem. The only two true rhymes in this stanza are snow and no. This rhyme scheme is continued in the second stanza, D-E-D-E-F-F-F. -E -F -F. Again, the only two true rhymes are in the third last line and the last line, tall and all. In stanza two, there's a very clear comparison between the creation of the universe and the creation of man. A 
comparison between the natural world and the individual. And we are forced to ask whether life is futile in the face of death. The first of the rhetorical questions suggests that war may be futile and that death is a true waste. In the final question, the poet goes on to state that the original act of creation may be futile because of the, the really unaccountable deaths during this period of the war. Again, the second stanza begins with an imperative verb, reconnecting with the reader in the think. Woke has continued to be an important motif throughout this stanza. And sunbeams are still personified. However, instead of being kind and old, they're now fatuous, complacently foolish. When the sun woke once the clays of a cold star, the poet is making a biblical allusion the cold star is the earth, and he is referring to a point in Genesis before the, the earth had seen the first rays of sunlight. Cold star is, of course, an oxymoron. A star cannot be cold. However, the earth that is at this point seen so much death certainly is. This phrase is emphasised through the use of alliteration. The connection between the world and the individual is really emphasised through nature imagery. In seeds that the sun has, wo has woken and in limbs, which may refer to arms and legs, but also to tree limbs. Here clay has also been repeated, showing the definite connection between the clay of the earth and clay that has grown tall, that is man. This is a second biblical allusion to the point at which Adam, Adam was created from the dust of the earth. So you can see here that man and the earth are inextricably connected. The series of rhetorical questions again connect to and challenge the reader. They're highly important as they don't have definite answers, and that's what makes them powerful. The tone here is point is hopeless, pointless, and in a way, I believe, angry. These questions have been asked, and there is no satisfactory answer. I would ask you now to take the time to create a table of the techniques you have found, the quotes these techniques can be found in, and the analysis. Think carefully about the analysis and what these techniques do to the meaning of the poem. <laughs> 